I'm Alan, just gonna run you through my thoughts on LEDs, when to use them, and how to get the best out of them. Nine times out of 10 when you're carp fishing, you need a lead of some description. Usually the angler's using it to hit a distance or get out onto a spot, therefore they need an amount of weight to reach that distance. Other reasons you use a lead in your carp fishing is to actually pull that hook home. When the fish picks up the bait and sucks and blows, you're waiting for that lead to pull the hook home. We manufacture a number of different styles of leads in lots of different sizes, and this is to give the angler the best opportunity to use the right lead in the right situation. When choosing a lead, bear in mind its size. There's some instances where you need a heavy lead to get a certain range. Other examples being, maybe you're fishing a lake, there's a lot of undertow or moving weed, so you need a heavy lead to hold your rig perfectly positioned on the bottom. If I turn up at my swim and there's fish showing at say 30 or 40 yards, the last thing I want to be doing is putting a four ounce lead on the red. A simple setup like this, using a one and a half ounce lead, I'm easily going to be able to hit my spot with absolute minimal disturbance, giving me maximum chances of actually getting a bite very, very quickly. I'm just going to quickly run you through the leads that are available from Nash and why I use them for each situation. First up's Dumpy Pear. This is my first choice of lead when I mark a float fishing. Its dumpy round profile makes it great for feeling the donk and the bottom, identifying the gravel or the silty areas. Its rounded profile also allows me to drag it across the bottom, locating those smooth areas or patches of gravel. Next up, we've got the Dumpy Square Pear. This is my lead choice when I'm fishing with running rigs. I always go for a heavy lead, around three to four ounces when using this style of rig. It's squared off profile, allows it to lay nice and flat on the bottom, and I always fish with a backstop. When the rig passes through and hits that, the lead comes into play and sets that hook home. Next up's the tractor lead, specifically designed for fishing rivers. Its large dimples around the surface area allow it to grip to the bottom of the riverbed. The flat pair. It's my choice of lead when I'm fishing with either a weed safety bolt bead or a safety bolt bead. It's low profile, allows the lead setup to lay completely flat to the lake bed that you're fishing over. The Long Ranger, a perfect lead for when fishing at range. I use it with my helicopter setup. It's tapered body and front loading of weight allows it to travel through the air. It's also the lead choice when I'm fishing with the chod rig. This lead will plug into the seal and allow me to fish the chod rig effectively. The inline flat pair, one of my favourite leads in the range. I use it for a multiple of lead setups. Shocker rig, this is a running lead on a leader. Basically the fish pick it up and the lead comes into play but actually passes along the setup. The second one is a drop off inline. Ideal for fishing in weedy and snaggy situations. This is where the leader passes over the top of the inline lead and can, when necessary, drop off. And the final one is a solid PVA bag. This is when my rig and my lead is completely going inside the bag. It's ideal for fishing at range or fishing up against beds of rushes, etc. I'm actually putting my rig inside. I'm loading it up with all the attractants and food and pellets and boilies. I'm then putting my lead into the top of the bag and I continue loading. I really puck a rig, but I ain't got time to show you exactly how to sort it out now, so that's for another time. And the last lead in the range is the inline flat square. This is brand new, hot off the press. I'll be honest guys, I haven't even fished with it myself, but I can't wait for this summer. I'm gonna use this as my stalking lead. When I see fish in the edge, I'm gonna be able to lower this lead down onto a spot, and it's ultra low profile will make it completely unobtrusive to any carp in the area. Can't wait to give this one a go. When selecting a lead, it's also well worth bearing in mind the coating or coloration that you're using. Just like your terminal tackle components, it's all about blending everything into the lake bed. In the past, Nash plastic coated their leads, just like a lot of the other companies are still doing. We've now moved over to the texture coating, and this has a number of advantages over other leads that are available on the market. Straight off the shelf, 
With their textured finish, speckled coloration and non-glare coating, they really are going to give you a major edge. But I've got a few little tricks and tips that will kind of hopefully allow you to customise your lead to suit the angling situation you find yourself in. First up, I've taken our leads and I've actually rubbed clay into them. That's simply a case of grabbing some clay at the margin, rubbing it into the lead, the texture coating grips the clay, leave it to dry 15-20 minutes and you're left with this. Perfect for fishing over clay or gravel bottoms. Next up, I've taken some silkweed from the margin of the lake and I've just simply wrapped this around the lead. Again, the texture coating has gripped the silkweed and if I leave this for 20 minutes, half an hour, it will dry out and allow me to create a lead that's perfect for fishing over weed and silkweed situations. And finally, I've taken a black marker pen to one. The texture coating again absorbs the pen ink into it and this is ideal for fishing over silty bottoms. With a little bit of thought and extra effort, you can actually customise one of these textured leads to the angling situation you're fishing in. And just to finish off, a few little ways of adding bait to your leads. First up, there's nothing to say you can't use your lead to act as a method feeder. Simple method mix, push your lead inside and you can form the method mix around your lead set up, creating a ball. Perfect. Paste, an often underused bait. Again, great for moulding around your lead. Just take a pinch, often sign I do when I'm fishing on the river, mould it into your tractor lead, that textured coating will help it grip, get it all the way around, and then I even roll it in things like hemp. You know, it'll stick in there and create a real appetising parcel of food for the fish. Squeeze all that in. I also mould a bit around the hook bait and the hook. And again, coat that in my particle mix. In this case, it's hemp seed. And once that's cast out on the spot in the river, that'll slowly start to break down over a period of time, sending nice attractions and smells downstream, hopefully drawing the fish up onto my hook bait. And my final little lead edge, and this is something I always do when I'm fishing runs, waters, or I'm trying to get a bite very, very quickly. Lead goes in the boily, in the boily dip, in the oil, straight into the food dip, and finally into the green lip muscle. Turn it over. That is an instant bite. If there's fish in the area, out that goes. Lead goes down on the bottom, oil coming up to the surface, food dip around the lead, and green lip muscle in the swim. It's a guaranteed bite. So there you have it, my thoughts on leads. Not the most interesting subject, but I hope I've given you a few ideas and tips so next time you chuck one out, you've done everything you can to maximise your chances.